Hello everyone, it's Deej and I'm back with another video on Meet Your Maker. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my journey to Master Rank. Yes, I finally reached Master Rank and to be honest, it wasn't that difficult. It was tedious, it was long-winded, but it wasn't that difficult. And I'm going to go through some of the tips that I learned throughout my process of reaching Master Rank. It's, it's very specific, very well thought through, and we're going to go through it. So firstly... Let's take a look at my loadout. This is the loadout I've used since the beginning and I haven't changed it. So I use the Volt Lancer with the Falconic Plasma Bow. And the reason for this is obviously a lot of the high ranking point maps have many enemies and using a sword in those can almost immediately rule you out from completing that map um, in some instances. This build here allows you to be, be pretty much any map out there within reason obviously there's some maps that are near enough impossible but this is the one that covers the most ground with regards to to maps obviously i've got the phoenix pod here and grenades grenades less useful phoenix pods i use on every single run so when i grab the gen mat i almost immediately put down a phoenix pod look around to see if there's anything that might kill me on a respawn and then move on from there so i'd recommend you using this obviously one thing to consider is that when you die with a phoenix pod it still counts towards one of your deaths which affects how many points you get at the end of a run now that's important generally i only go and do a run and die once and if i die more than once you know with the phoenix pod so if i die twice then i'll generally just leave that map and the reason for that and i'll show you in a bit more detail is the ratings points you get as you go higher especially in the gold rank um the effects of dying in a map is far more Sort of it deals a far greater blow on your points and if you want to maximize the amount of points you get per hour try and avoid long-winded maps try and avoid maps that kill you multiple times um i think if you get killed twice the only benefit you get from completing a brutal map is a measly number of points or sometimes even a minus points if you quit the map instead you actually get a minus 30 hit and allows you to move on to another map and that's part of the overall process. So if we look at the map system here, there's a lot of information here. I'm just dumping it as and when. Um, so first and foremost, avoid normal maps. They're not going to give you much reward for your sort of efforts. Um, you kind of have to beat these without dying at all. Otherwise, it's, it's absolutely pointless waste of time in the gold ranks. Um, early stages, if you want to get used to the game, obviously stick to gold. Um, but I generally try and look at the brutal maps first and foremost. So I'll have a look here on these map lists. And what I'm looking for immediately is a few things. The first one is if the map is somewhat of a gift map. So you're looking around for sort of gifts map, gift maps that look like they have the word free or gift or they look kind of funky and, you know, it look they look welcoming in a sense. Now, sometimes that can be misleading. However, most of the time I've gone into these maps and they have been these sort of free completion maps. And in those, I've got another video coming out about those. Um, they usually offer you a chance to, you know, jump into the fire pit and give the creator some points as well. I generally do that in all of those maps. It does slow down my process, but I think if people are willing to put these kind of maps up, you might as well reward them for doing it in the process. Um, so as you're looking through these maps, you'll see, obviously, in my previous video, I said you've got three different sizes of maps. I think everyone knows that now. And what you're looking for in the brutal category is maps that have the one size, the smallest size. And the reason for this is that the, there's a build limit depending on the size of the map that you buy. And if you buy a smaller map, the build limit is far, far lower, but can still be brutal. So by doing a smaller map of this size, let's say like Tranquility here, it's got a capacity of 750. Based on the later game, these maps generally get to level six or seven, which means they might have 1,500 capacity, something around that region. That leaves them with very little to work with. A um, couple of enemies, a couple of traps. They're far easier to get through, but they give you a brutal level reward to your points. So look for those and do those whenever you can. Same rules apply. If they are ultimately too difficult for you, still quit them. Don't keep trying them just for the sake of it. But generally, go by sort of the limits of the map. So if you can see a smaller level map, and if you actually can see the picture, if the map looks smaller, it's going to take you less time to do it might be an easier map for you to do. Um, you want to avoid maps that look like this, perhaps. Or even, you know, this one here I did do, as you can see, and I'm going to show you why I quit out of this immediately. Um, it looks like a smaller map. You go up this this ramp, clearly. 
you go into this end state and you can complete the map quite simply. Either you get killed immediately, quit, or you have a really simple, quick finish to this map. So I, I like those kind of maps. I go looking for them. Let's go into dangerous here. Same applies for dangerous. You want the smaller maps whenever possible, but I would avoid dangerous unless you've gone through your five or six brutal maps and you've seen all of these look quite long-winded. They look a bit difficult. They look like there's risks involved. I'm going to jump down to dangerous. And the reason to do the dangerous, obviously you get quite good rank points. I would say moderate rank points. But every time you do a map, whether you complete it or not, and if you complete it, go back to the menu. If you die, go back to the menu. All the maps that you, you haven't selected will rotate. So if I'm to select a map now and die and then quit, all the maps except Brooklyn here will have rotated. So I can go and have another look to see if there's anything else I want to do. And, and what you're trying to do in Brutal is you want to... If you beat a map in one go without dying once, you get around 150 ratings points. If you quit a map, you lose 30 ratings points. So every five quits, you have to win a map without dying, basically. And that is a good trade-off. You don't want to waste your time on a map that's killed you seven times, only for you to complete it to still get minus 30 points or minus five points or whatever it is. Just quit the map, go and find another one. The list will refresh. And what I like to do is I'll look through, if I've just done Brooklyn, for example, I failed it, it was really difficult, I quit. I don't abandon it. So keeping this here is good. And I want to look through the rest of my maps. I want to see if there's anything I'd like here. In reality, there isn't much. I'm looking through this, maybe this one, because it's got an open-ended, it looks like perhaps it's, it's, it's a simple finish. Um, that one looks okay. That one looks all right. That one looks long-winded. That one looks okay. Nothing stands out. I'm going to go down to Brooklyn. And because I've done it and quit, I'm going to abandon it. So what happens when I abandon Brooklyn, you can see all the maps on this list have reset. And that goes for all of them across Dangerous, Brutal, Normal. They all have reset, so I get to look again. This one looks okay. That one looks a bit long-winded. That one looks okay. That one looks a bit long-winded. That one definitely is a bit smaller. That one looks okay to be. It looks more wide open. I don't know if there's even a base there, which is interesting. And you have to keep in mind, if people are building their bases underground, they have very limited space. So if you don't see a base over the top, chances are it's quite an easy base to complete. This one, as you can see, is a brute or a dangerous with a small size. I would probably choose this one next, um, but I'm going to have a look at the other ones. This one says SOS, so it's probably a bit of a difficult one as well. That's a, a, one, a, one, a small size as well. Um, it looks like it perhaps could be a gift base. I'm not sure. Um, but that's what you're looking for is sort of you get used to the, the signs of what a, what a good base is. Obviously, this is to rank up fast. I understand that it might not be the fun, the funnest way of doing it, the best way of doing it, because you're missing out on some very elaborate maps and you're quitting maps and all that kind of stuff. I get that. But if you're just looking to rank up and I would imagine the season system is starting very, very soon and it ends, I believe, in June. They've said it in the news uh, article thing. Um, I believe it ends in June. So we're going to want to rank up quite fast. And I, I must say this did take me on and off playing, um, seriously trying to rank up about two weeks, two weeks, I would think, on and off playing. Um, going up a rank, I would say I was getting about 3,000 points a day whenever I was playing this. Um, so if you're trying to focus on that, I would take these tips into consideration. On the build side, now, very important to note this, and it's a learning process for me with Jupiter, and obviously I've, I've done a squid game. I'll do a video on this at some point. Um, these gift bases, they do impact your rating. So if you're going for a high rank, you have to disable these because every time someone completes your base without dying or with very low deaths, you actually lose rating points. If you're going to have bases, make sure they are death traps that are going to get you a high kill ratio. But even at that... Even at that, I know this is a base building game where you're, base, you're building a base and defending a base. The ratings you get from ba building bases yourself is not that substantial. If you're going to spend all that time building an elaborate sort of death zone that people are going to play, the points aren't that good. You might notice uh, a few jumps in your points when you log on the next day, but nothing considerable. Nothing that would amount to you even doing 
you know, the amount of maps you could do in the space of time of the um, the maps themselves. So keep that in mind. Obviously, having five bases on the go if you already have them is great. If they're getting you a good kill ratio of about, you know, anywhere between 3.5 and, and above, then you're good to go. But um, as Nightdale here has got 3.2, but still, I think that one's going to do me some favors down the line. Um, that is generally what I would go for when you're looking at maps. Again, I'll show you, for example, here, I'm going to give this this mannequins whatever sabot or actually we're gonna have a look at that one that had what looked like a gift base but it probably isn't uh this one here let's have a quick look and see what we see and i'll explain my thought process so you've seen all the maps on brutal we've seen all the maps on dangerous we're gonna go into this map here i have no idea what's going on it looks like a fully fledged map i'm assuming it is yeah oh of enemies oh there could be just a, a, a sort of end state trap there we're gonna kill this guy and this is why i use this uh weapon uh the, this weapon configuration because i can take these guys out i can move on and all if i die really embarrassingly here i got the sound turn right down i have no idea what's coming i'm gonna try and get everyone my accuracy is ab abysmal absolutely abysmal what I would imagine now, when I get to the top of this, is going to have to climb all the way down, or something along those lines, something elaborate, which is not what we're looking for necessarily. Um, and obviously, through these maps, your key, there's no time limit for these maps. They, you can take as long as you need to, you can take as long as you want. You want to avoid dying as much as possible. That is the simple, the simple fact of it all. You want to take your time, um, within reason, of course. You don't want to spend a, you know, an hour on each map, but you want to take your time. And avoid dying is is the ultimate goal. Um, okay, a trap there. This one looks like it's going to be a bit long-winded. I'm not going to do this for the video. I'm just trying to show. Up. I'm just going to let, let him get a kill. Oh, never mind. We'll rush through. See what we can find. Let's see what we can find. Let's just rush through. Yeah, I'm dead. Cool. So, let's say for example, I mean this base was quite doable. Um, but let's say I've hit a base that has killed me twice now. I really don't feel like I'm going to complete it. On the second death, without even respawning, just leave the base, return to Sanctuary. I probably might lose my, my champion rank here. Um, give them a rating. I might lose my master rank. I don't, but you do lose overall rating points. My position is 715 in the world. That's pretty crazy. Um, but we've gone back to Sanctuary now. And like I said before, the, the same sort of principles will apply here so we're going to go into the map list and they've now reset so all the apart from noblesville which we've do, just done all these maps will reset we're gonna have a look that one looks good this one looks good because it's a small that one looks terrible avoid it at all costs okay that's okay I'm gonna look at twin grove and champion outposts now keep in mind i just want to say a little bit about them Keep in mind that these are champion outposts for a reason. So they've either been rated very highly or they're super difficult. So when you're selecting them, be very mindful of that fact. There's a reason why they've been reached that, that sort of threshold of rank six or rank five, whatever it is, to make it into a champion outpost. Looking at it, it might be misleading, um, but they are worth doing. I believe you do get a, a ratings boost for doing the higher leveled maps as well. Um, but just be mindful that if you'd see your two or three um, champion outposts, or you can even do a normal outpost to get your, you know, your rewards if you're looking for that. Um, but I wouldn't suggest immediately going for the champion's outpost just because it's there. Um, so we're looking at the brutal ones now. See, that one's massive. You don't want to do that. So that one's a bit more reasonable. It's mo you can clearly see it's mainly underground. Um, so you you'd might want to select that one. That one's okay. And then what I'll do is I'd select another map, right? And if if I pass it, all of them get refreshed. If I do if I find a map I like here, whatever. But treat Noblesville then as a reroll. So you've got a free reroll because you've died and you've quit there. I can do an abandon again. I'm not just gonna abandon it immediately and reroll. I'm gonna choose another map if there's one there. I'm gonna have a look around here. Okay. You know, if I if I pick Yenes, I'm gonna pick this one. 
go into it, I die again. I've now got two rerolls of the map system. So I can go to Noblesville here now, abandon it, and it rerolls all over again. I get another list of bases. And you can basically store these up. If, if, if when you get back from a death or from a quit or from a complete, you see a base you like, keep the reroll in your back pocket because that map will stay there for you to abandon and just reroll the maps um, to find something more suitable. So that, that's, that's the gist of what got me to, I mean, this says bed on it, I think, or Ben. Probably Ben, yeah, Benji. Um, that's the gist of what my thought processes was going through this. Um, focusing in on maps that, you know, were easy, easier, that wouldn't put too much pressure, and not spending too much time on an individual map. Um, just keep rotating through. Again, highlighting that the gear I've used here, this particular suit, it's worked really, really well. I mean, having the the ammo highlighted is nice, but the main thing with this particular suit is the fire rate is great. It's a magnetic link because you get to pick up ammo at a longer range. And I think some people have gotten quite clever with where they place their traps. And sometimes it can be quite difficult to get your ammo back. But when you're using two guns or two ranged weapons, this works for both. So to me, it's, it's, it's the clear the clear best loadout for ranking up fast and you know some other sweat might tell me otherwise and say that oh double blades is the best and you run through smashing all the traps i i don't have the patience for that i can't i can't concentrate to that level to be honest i think the safe and secure way of doing it is is with the two range weapons taking it slow you know methodically going through and breaking traps keeping an eye out for gift bases if you see those prioritize those um, and don't spend too much time building your own base, to be honest. It, it, it's not that important. Um, but I think I've covered covered most most areas. Obviously, most of my resources in the early game went into maxing out my weapons um, just to have them. I mean, arc barrier is another option if you, if you're if you're you know if you're not not going to slow trigger like I do. Um, arc barrier is definitely a useful tool. And then obviously maxing out your suit. Um, prioritizing the magnetic link is important because of how useful it is in these missions. Um, and then I guess my traps are still in the process of being upgraded along with all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, level 56 is a reasonable idea, maybe level 50, level 55 around those areas. You should be starting to look at getting that master level. Um, and my tribute level or my chimera level is 76. So doing these heavy level maps is getting me a lot of XP for my advisors. Um, I don't know what, how to check their individual levels, but they are level 100 weapons advisor. I didn't even know that. Level 42, you can see here, level 42 hardware advisor. I think most of my bases are weapon bases. Um, level 100 traps advisor. I think it just rotates back around each time once you reach level 100. Um, but yeah, I'm curious. What does the boost look like at level 100? Not impossible. Oh, it's not that not that good, is it? Really, increases the duration of five hours is quite impressive. Um, but yeah, it's not it, anyone can do this if you're if you're careful and you start to understand the trends of the maps and how the the pictures kind of tell a to, tell a story, then you'd be in a much better stead of of reaching master. I know they're going to probably change the matchmaking system going forward they already have ones to prioritize maps with little uh with low low attempts which is good a good step in the right direction but i think again this suffers from the idea that you know kind of like dead by daylight where there's more um people who want to play on the the killer side versus the survivor side and this it's more people want to be on the build side than they want to play the maps um which i think obviously syntite the lack of Synthite, as you can see from my numbers, is one of the reasons why you would play maps. But once you've got enough, I've seen people um, who live stream that generally just kind of stop playing at that point. They'll, they'll reactivate all their bases and then just stop playing. Um, so, yeah, I think, again, you're looking for master. Hopefully these tips can help you on your way. Um, if there's anything else that you found yourself, please feel free to share your ideas, your thoughts. If there's something you disagree with. Um, let me know in the comments. I just thought it might be good to to share my journey at least um, on how I get there. Um, 
and I hope you enjoy it. So make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Plenty more Meet Your Maker videos to come out down the line. My tips videos will resume after a short brief break when I did that, when I was playing uh, Dead Island 2. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.